it. Oh, wonderful. Now, I decided, basically, to think about this exhibition in these terms. I thought the only thing to think about was the way that the humans have dealt with dogs because it's, it varies all through the centuries. And I thought one of the interesting things was to just look at that a little bit. So the first exhibition, the first photograph that we'll see is ancient, is the ancient world. And these, of course, you know, this is the one on the left is Lascaux, and the one on the right is, is, is a, diff, a different one. And this is, this is all, still, in, uh, still in France, they're, they're, both, they're both in France. And the, the one on the right is in Ardèche. And the, the one on the left, uh, of course, is, is, is Lascaux. And I, I don't know whether you remember this, but the, the, the incredible thing was the way that Lascaux was found. It was found in 1940. Two boys and their dog were walking, uh, uh, walking in, the, in, 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 the, in the sort of um, forest, uh, forested area. And the dog fell down a hole. And the kids went after him and discovered all this. And of course, rushed back and told mum. But and, and presumably, it, it made, and everybody came rushing in. It was in, the, but it was in the war. It was 1940, and it was not open to the public until 1948. And then, of course, it was discovered that all our breath and all the people there. It was destroying the the the, the images. So it's it. They start. They they shut it down again in 1960. But the one on the right was only discovered in 1994. And this is the first time we see animals that could be dogs. I mean, they, they're probably wolves. But I mean, you know, they, they, they're much, much later. They, they came from, uh, the, 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 they're Neolithic, I think. And they came, they came, they think in this particular group, they think there were two different tribes. And the, 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 the later one, they think they're about about sort of 12,000 years old. But the, the first ones, of course, are, we're talking about uh, 26,000 years old. But there you see are the bison and uh, mammoths and lions. And, and you know, they're, they're, they're obviously, but we're not sure. They don't really know the date of this, for this one, but they think it is, it is about sort of uh, 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 12,000 years because this is the time of the agriculture. Now, I, there was a marvelous program on the uh, on the television which I managed to find, and it was the 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 the, the, uh, the stuff they're finding in Orkney, and there they find they were Stone Age people, and there they had they had uh, cows, and it was it was an agricultural thing, and that was six thousand years ago, so. It appears that our agricultural bit was a bit late, uh, later than, than that on the continent. Anyway, these are, this one I thought was terribly interesting because when you look at it carefully, are they are they wolves or are they dogs? We don't really know. But anyway, this those is, are those are cats, Pat. Those are those are like not cats. yes, these are where are cats. These are these are no. not cats, but they're um like tigers or like early early versions of, of well i think they think they're sort of wolves really they, that's what they think oh. okay or bears I, they, they, but anyway they're they're different you see from this group well, there's here. a bison yeah there's all those terrible that's sort of 20 23 thousand years old i gather they're amazing Thanks. look at how the color is love to go. The i'd love to go but you, uh, but yeah, there you go it's one of those places now the next one we've gone to egypt and that is a mummy, a dog mummy, and he, that, that he's called Anubis, and he was one of the gods uh, uh, that, that, that protected the god of death. And they're seven, 700, 750 BC. This one on this side, and I gather there is a there is a a, a, a complete mass of, of of these dogs at, at one point in Egypt. I've not seen them. The one on the right, I think, is very beautiful. But look how elegant the the dogs here are. And they, they say they're human they're human figures with dogs' heads. And I think this little dog here is rather sweet. Now both of these that that are about Anubis, the god of death. So we've now got to sort of 700 at the 7 BC. But they're beginning to be domesticated. Okay, next one. Now, this one, of course, is the Greeks. 
And this is very, very interesting because we are seeing dogs being used as hunters. And it's an amphora, of course, a hunting job. This is 50, 500 uh, BC. And it really, really is quite remarkable, this one. And, and the one on the right is Roman, and that's mosaic. Now, these were guard dogs, and they're all over the place. There's, this is first century BC. And uh, they, it's the first time, really, that the dogs were begin, beginning to be used moderately, but, but usefully, actually, usefully. Okay, next one, because this one is the greatest. This is in the exhibition, and it is wonderful. It's a Roman marble dog. It's called the Townley dogs, the Townley greyhounds, because it, it was bought by, 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 I think his name was Edward Townley. But anyway, the most interesting thing of this wonderful piece is that it was discovered by an Englishman, a, 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 an artist. He's called Gavin Hamilton, and he was digging around in Rome in 1774, and he dug this up and sold it to the Townley man. This is why it's still called the Townley one. It is, they're not very big, but they're so beautiful. Can you see the way that this dog is licking the, the face of the other one? Now, the one on the other side was also came from Rome, but this one is in, is in uh, Berlin. But it's a Roman dog. And of course, there's a, a little dog underneath it here. It's a bit more fiercer. These are just absolutely beautiful. And they, 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 they really are. They're not a scratch on them. They, oh, they're, they're absolutely wonderful, these dogs. We, they're, they're amazing. We, we were tremendously impressed with these. And the way that they're, I mean, that, to carve it out of marble oh, and then incredible. to see like the, the rib, the ribs and veins and beautiful. tendons is beautiful. incredible. So it's first, first or second century, that's all they know about <clears> it. <throat> now we go into the medieval time. And this time we see the dogs being made useful. And this one is an English manuscript. And this is 13th century. And of course, they're sheep dogs. And you can see the dogs here playing around here. But what is very interesting is the French one, which is also 13th century. And it's dedicated to Gregory V. But it's a dog for the blind, you see. And this is in the manuscript. But suddenly in the center, which is also French, and it's the Mort d'Arthur, story and this is Sir Lancelot this is 1325 but interestingly the dog in this case is a lap dog and this is the first time we see dogs being used as as in interior friends not not usefully but this is very early this is in, 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 we'll see this much later as we go on but I thought the, I thought the, the English one was really very beautiful look at the different way the dogs are described Look at them running. Anyway, that, that the next lot, of course, is Jura. And this is absolutely wonderful. Now, when that when we were talking about this on Tuesday, I'm so irreligious, I don't know these things, but by all accounts, this is the vision of St. Eustace. Now, according to Daisy, who seemed to know this, St. Eustace was hunting and he saw Christ, and he became a Christian, and there he is on his knees, and I gather he saw Christ in the tree or something. But this dog here, this drawing here, which is in the British Museum, this is, this is of course not, this is in Germany, but this is in the British Museum, and this is the, one, of the, one of Durham's drawings, and here we can see the dog here in the etching. Absolutely wonderful. This is, uh, Durham's dates are 1471, to 1580. So you see, we're beginning of the beginning of the 15th century. Now, the one on the right is Hans Holbein. Now, this is interesting. Look, this is the young prince. This is Prince Albrecht the Eighth, and this is this is 1523. This is in Austria, and you see the scale of the dog. The dog is the size of the dog, and the powerfulness, it, it, it is about power and wealth and money and, and strength. It's a very interesting picture. It's one of, you'll see this being picked up. But at the moment, this is only for, for, for royalty. These pictures like this were only for royalty because it's about power. Okay, next one. But this 
We're now, now we're getting into the Renaissance. This is Titian. And this little girl, which is quite marvellous, she's called Clarice, and she's a Medici. And this is her dog, a Papillon Spaniel, it says. And this particular one is 1542. She's the daughter of the Duke of Mantua. And again, this little dog is, you see, it was all about class and money. You had to be very rich to be able to have a pet like this and have a dog and have a dog as a pet, but not as a worker. Now the one on the right is, I think, absolutely lovely. And this is my first cat. And this is a Nibere Karachi, uh, the same time, actually. He was born 1560. Uh, Tisha was born, uh, for, uh, 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 he was earlier, 1458. So we're talking now the uh, 16th century and the 17th century. And these are two children with a cat. And this is, this is 1590. I think the cat is rather sweet. It's got a, a human face, really. If you look it's at it, really it's really irritating, it's, it's, isn't it? Yes, it's fed up with the kids. Of course, the kids are teasing it, really. With Scorpio, yeah, yeah it's, it's a very it's, it's an interesting picture. Okay, the next two, one of my very, very favorite periods, the one on the right. This is the Mannerist period, and this is Bronzino. And this is Bronzino, a lady with a lap dog, 1533. Look how beautiful this one is, and the little dog. A careful way it's made out of marvelous color, marvelous sense of, of their set the mannerism is so linear, linear. The one on the left is Titian, and this is this is uh, the Duke of Mantua. This dog is interesting, isn't it? Because it isn't a, a hunting dog. I, I don't know what kind of dog it is. Everybody seemed to know on Tuesday about the, the kind of dogs they were, but this doesn't look like a hunting dog, does it, Camilla? Do you think? It's not, it's, it's no. not, no, it's a different, it's, it's quite different. It's kind of too, well, I guess it could Strange, be. Strange, isn't it? Anyway, this is the 1540s, but it's not a gun dog, you see, and this one we've got the lap dog, which again denotes That's definitely power. not a gun dog. Yes. Okay, next one. Now, these two are very interesting, and I want you to look at them very carefully, because here we have... Probably one of the very earliest nudes. It's Titian, it's the Venus of Urbino, and it's, it's 1538. Now, there's no doubt about it that Manet, when he did his Olympia, was looking very firmly at, T at Titian. But I want you to look carefully at the kind of composition it is. Now, look at the Titian. She is looking at us, but she's comfortable. I think much more sensuous than the other one. But the whole thing is the, the nude being as accepted, accepting her, her position. The little dog, as you see here. Now look what Manet's done by 1863. His nude is angry. The difference in the composition. Look how 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 sort of sharp, and upright she is. She's still looking at us, but look at the difference in her. And in the corner here, we've got a little cat. You can hardly see it in this this one here. And of course, the cat, the dog was always considered to be sweet and lovely, but like the domesticated. Cat, oh yes, but the cat was always an uh, an an image of women's sensuality and uh, their uh, everything they, they were associated with witches they were they were considered about their sensuality and so uh, courtesans <laughs> were always shown with cats and of course she's meant to be a courtesan but i just want you to dip look it's very interesting the difference in this angry nude and this very don't you think that's interesting, Camilla? The well, the cat is, is yes. The cat you could you, can you can't say, tell, but it's yeah. it's almost it's on its yes. It's a the black fur cat. is raised. It's it's, it's altered. Yes. But look at the shape of her. Isn't that interesting? Look at this lovely cir circular movement and the anger of this one. 
isn't it interesting? He 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 was looking at uh, at, at Tisha when he did this, and of course you all know this caused tremendous uh, upset, and it was in the, the you know it was it, he put it into the salon, but it caused a tremendous fuss. Okay, next one. Now this is interesting. In in Venice in the seventeenth century, for the very first time, dogs were painted by themselves without humans as as the subject. And both of these, this one here is Jacopo Bassano, and this is 50, he died in 1592. This is about 1548, and it's two hunting dogs. But interestingly, they're tied to a tree, which I think is really rather nasty. And the other one is much more mysterious. It's after Veronese, but it isn't Veronese. They don't know who painted this, really. Uh, it, 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 it's around about 1588. It's two greyhounds and they're tied together. But what the picture, what, what they're actually, they're a copy of a much, much larger dog, you know, which was the, the marriage of Kenya. Um, and the, and that was from the dogs in the foreground, but they do not know really who, 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 who painted this one. It may have been a member of Veronese's studio. They just don't know. But again, they're straight. These are dogs which are painted literally just for dogs. We've got our, a cat now coming in. Okay, next one. This one I found for a long, long time. The one on the right was thought to be Velasquez. It now is not given to Velasquez. It's given to one of his students. Um, um, uh, it's, he's called De Groda Silva. And it's the dwarf with the dog. It's a very cruel picture, really. Now, the one on the left is the typical sense of power and aristocracy. This is Velasquez, and it's the Infanta Ferdinand of Austria with a hunting dog. And this is still, the dogs, when they're put with people like this, are still really a symbol of the importance of the, of the figure. But the one on the right, I think, is very interesting because, of course, this is much crueler, really. It's really describing the dwarf. Look at the size of the dog by comparison to the figure. It's an incredible picture. It's in, it is in, in Madrid. So when you go, go and have a look at this. It's really, I mean, the, the, the dwarf is incredibly richly dressed. Look at that wonderful sort of silk of his garments and the great hat that he's holding in his hand. Okay. Okay, next one. And now we come to Holland or the Netherlands. And this, we've now moved from Italy, of course. And the, the one which I think is absolutely beautiful, the one on the left here is by Gerard Du, and his date dates are 16, 13 to 75. And this particular dog is, is, seven, uh, is 1656. And look how tenderly that dog is painted. It's a beloved pet you could see. Very interesting. And the one on the right is Rembrandt. And of course, in her hand, you see the laptop. She's obviously a wealthy young woman. Look at her jewelry, look at her jewelry and her furs. And a tiny little dog in the hand. This particular one is actually in, in Ontario, this painting. It's very interesting, this one. This is possibly, they think it's around 1662 to 1665. They're not quite sure of the, of, the, of the date of this one. Okay, next one. Now, these are still in the royal, royalty because this, of course, is Anthony Van Dyke, Sir Anthony Van Dyke. And these are the three eldest children of Charles I. And this is 1635, 36. And again, they're Spaniels. Very, very sweet little, little dogs. The one on the right is in the Wallace collection. And I think it's very interesting. It's a marriage portrait. When you see it very clearly, you see her tiny little dog here. And his large dog, nearly as big as him. She's called Marie de Red. And he's called Philippe de Roy. And he's, these are 16, 16, they're roughly 1630. 
but he's much, much older than her. When you actually see the picture, she looks about sort of 15 or 16, very, very young, very beautifully. But something's happened. We're now, we're now coming from very, the, the, it's moved away from being a royal, dogs being shown with royalty. They're now moving into the sort of the upper middle class, the sort of mine in, 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 in the Netherlands, a wealthy ma manufacturer, really. Okay, so they're, they're, their use is slightly different. Okay, next one. And here, it's, this is very, very interesting. This is describing, we're at the end of the Thirty Years' War. Holland has seceded from Spain and it's become Protestant. So these pictures are about the difference between the Protestants and the Catholics. And the Catholic is called the Dissolute Household, it's the one on the right. And it's by Jan Steen, and it's about 1663. The one on the left is wonderful Peter de Hook, and it's a man delivering a letter. But what is interesting, look at the, the, the order and the clarity and the use of perspectival space. The point about it is, in the Burgers' home, what we're, what we're being told is order and cleanliness is, equate, is equated to godliness. In the Catholic home, you can see everything falling apart. Look at the dog here. It's busily eating the leftovers. And the Drunken monkey. people. Where's, yes, there's all sorts of... I, I don't see the monkey. Where's right the, here. Oh, yeah, there's a, oh, yes, up there, right up there. The whole thing. Smoking falling down, little child, also there, complete chaos. You know, chaos. And look at the, you see the, 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 the they're playing cards, they're doing everything wrong. And this is the difference between Protestant Holland and the Catholic, which I think is very interesting. Okay, next to. Drink some water. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> now, here we come, we're coming, finally, we're coming to April. Now, we're looking, actually, in this case, we're looking at Joshua Reynolds, and something has changed. The dog is now shown as a, as a, as a part of a, a, the country, really. This is a country gentleman. I mean, he's probably a landowner of some kind. In 1723, he's called Sir Walter Gloverley Blackwell. Uh, sorry, no, it's 17, uh, 1760. But it's the sort of the wealthy upper middle class. The dog has become very much more of a, of a companion. And the one on the right, I think, is absolutely wonderful. Reynolds very good with children. And this is, this is Miss Jade Bowles and her spaniel. This is 1775. But again, it's a picture of a wealthy family. Her clothes are very, very rich. And she's seen in a landscape like the man on the side. Now, the Reynolds suddenly became very, 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 very successful portrait painter in England. But he, like everybody else, he's gone to Rome, uh, to, uh, to Italy. And he'd been very much influenced by the next man we will look at. And this is, this is a man called Pompeo Batoni. Now, Batoni was the most favourite painter for the English milords, the ones that went on the Grand Tour. And what we're looking at now is the experience of the Grand Tour. Uh, the, 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 his, his dates were 1708 to 87. He was very, very successful portrait painter in Rome, and he actually was in charge of the Vatican's port, uh, pictures. And he had a, he lived in a sort of a minor sort of palace, and he would have sort of great gatherings of the rich and the famous, and most especially artists and intellectuals. 
and the the English lords all wanted to get to get a get an invitation, and he was a great great favorite painter. And this is Reynolds was looking at him when it, very, it was very influenced by him. Now the picture on the left is John Talbot, the first Earl of Talbot, it's 1773, and look at it carefully. Again, it's a spaniel, and he's dressed very carefully. And if you see the back, it's the stuff that he's bringing home. This is, you know, I, I've already told you about Gavin Hamilton finding the, the Rome. There was much, much interest in, in people bringing bits of antique home. And this is exactly what's here at the back here. The one on the right is the Duke of Gordon. And he's seen as a huntsman. Now, this is interesting because this was painted in Rome. And yet the landscape, as far as one can see, is almost like an English landscape. So it must have been painted. I don't know how it was painted, perhaps from an engraving. But look at all the dogs here. And what is this? Is, 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 this, a, is this dead? It looks like a dead animal, doesn't it? Is it, it like a deer? Yeah, deer. Do you think deer. they just well, they yeah. killed it? There's a like deer and rabbit. Yeah, horrid. And he, this, he's, he's being shown as a huntsman, of course, with his, with his horse and, and uh, his very splendid clothes. Now, the next one is going to be Thomas Gainsborough. And I'm going to read something about this, about this picture in the centre. Uh, this is, uh, this, uh, this is, comes from the TLS, and I'm qu quoting it. After quarrelling with his wife, Thomas Gainsborough would write a letter of apology in the guise of Fox, their pet collie, addressing himself to Tristram, their spaniel. Fox would deliver the letter to Margaret Gainsborough by mouth. And this is what this picture is about. There is Fox and there is Tristram. Isn't that sweet? And uh, th this picture on the left, which is in, in the, the Wallace collection, is Perdita. Now, Perdita was a lady of, of the, well, she had been one of the mistresses of, of uh, George IV. She's an actress and she's called Mrs. Mary Robinson. And she is seen sitting in a landscape. It's, a, it's not a very good uh, reproduction. The painting is absolutely beautiful. And uh, th this, as I say, is, is upstairs. So go and have a look at it when you go to, if you go and see the exhibition. And the, 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 the drawings on the right are absolutely wonderful. Again, they're Gainsborough, and they're Gainsborough's drawing of cats. Now, the reason Trist, the, the, the name of the, the, the dog was called Tristan is because there's a very, very popular novel at the time, which is Tristan Shandy, and it was by Lawrence Stern, and everybody was, was, was using suddenly the name, and so there is Fox and there is Tristan. They say of the time that Gainsborough is a very jolly man, very good-natured and happy, but, but Reynolds were very stiff, and so people like going to again who goes to see Gainsborough just to talk to him, really. Okay, let's have the next one. Now, this is so beautiful. This one is in the exhibition, the one on the left. It's French. But what's important about it is that it's in pastel. It's the first one we've seen in pastel. It's, his dates were 1590 to 1649. He was a court painter. It's a study of a dog. And it's 1632, but the one on the right is so funny. This is the beginning of these very, very strange little dogs. It's it's called the Dog of the Hanover Breed. And it's Jean-Jacques Bachet, and it's 1768. And look at it carefully, because you can see his, his, he's been shaved here, and his little, little face, and that funny little pink thing around the front and the, the, the eyes is almost human and his very splendid little little box that he sleeps in. I don't know what the ball and so on say this it's very this is a this is very nice. There's a set there's another one, a, a, a French one there as well. Okay, next one in this area. And here he is. This I think is very interesting. Of course it's the Hogarth. It's the Hogarth self-portrait and he'd quite deliberately 
says that he looks like his dog Pug. His his dog is called Trump, but it's a Pug dog, and there's a detail of 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 that dog. But what is here on his his uh, palate is a, a message that is talking about his recent book, which was called this, which was called um, uh, the the Line of Beauty. And this is what it says on here. So this is really sort of a self advertising picture telling about his books, which is here, which is just done. But look at the, com com the, the deliberate comparison of the face of the dog and the, and, the, and the man. Very, very interesting, because you really do un get to understand the sincere love of the human people with the dogs that they have. Okay, next one. Here is the wonderful Stubbs. And look how grand this dog is. This is one of the most important of, of, um, of a foxhound. He's called Ringwood. And he was born, and his date was 1792. And he's, he's dominating his land. He's one of the most important uh, of, of, the, of the dogs here. And this one, and the stubs as well, is a couple of foxhounds the same year. But look at the little cat. This is this is a very sweet little cat, little painting, and it's called Miss Anne White's Kitten, and it was done. It was seventeen ninety. It's a beautiful painting. Stub the stubs are beautiful. There's lots of them. I've only shown a very very few of them, but in the exhibition there are a lot of stubs, and they really are quite remarkable. Okay, next one. Now, how are we coming to the nineteenth century, particularly to Queen Victoria? And here we see Edwin Lansdale. Now Lansdale virtually does something very interesting. He brings back the history painting. The, you know, the salon before the Impressionists and so on were dominated with pictures that told the story and they were narrative. And he brings back the narrative painting. But in his case, he brings it back with with animals. And so the titles of his paintings are very, very important. This one, for example, it's the self-portrait. He was born in 82, he died in 73, and he was knighted. He was, he was Prince Albert and uh, Queen Victoria's favorite painter. And he's the man, by the way, who, who did the drawings, uh, made, the, made the models for the lions at the bottle uh, in Trafalgar Square, you know, the ones in Nelson's column. Poor man, he was an alcoholic and he he died in a mental home. But the picture on the left, again, I'm telling you the, the title, it's called The Connoisseurs. And The Connoisseurs, of course, there's two dogs behind the self-portrait. And it's 1865. Now, the one in the centre is very, very sweet. This was Victoria's present to Prince Albert. Now, Victoria and Prince Albert were cousins. He was a Sax Coburg and he was a German. And when he came to England to marry her, he brought along his dog. And this is his dog. This is his dog. Uh, uh, and and, and uh, the 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 uh, uh, I thought oh yes it's Eros I thought I had the correct title he's called Eros and if you look at the picture it's very sweet because there are the Prince Albert's hat and his gloves on the side here and this is a very elegant dog against this red background it's a lovely painting but the ones on the right are very interesting they are Queen Victoria's watercolors and there are a whole wall of them. She was very good. Here are her favourite little dachshunds here on the bottom. And, and they're called Hector and Dash, these two little dachshunds. And there he is. This is, very, this is very, uh, uh, another little dog that's sitting up very splendidly. And these were around about, she painted them about the same time as this, so sort of 1838 to 40, when she was just married. And there's a whole wall for her work. She was really very good. Now, the next one, we're going to see the dog 
again, this is a narrative picture. This picture is probably the favourite one of Landseer's. It's now in the v &A. It's called The Shepherd's Chief Mourner. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the dog here. And all the, in, the interior of the cottage with the, with the coffin here and the hat and the stick. The whole of this. It's a beautiful little beautiful painting, this one. And this one is 1837, same time as the ones we've been looking at before. But this one is just funny, I think. This is Dignity and Impudence here. And this one is 1839. Now, he did masses and masses of pictures of dogs. And, uh, uh, but of course, stags and so on. Okay, next one, which is very interesting. This is, I gather, a hero dog. He called it a hero dog. This particular dog was on the ship and there was a shipwreck. And he, the dog rescued four people. And so the dog became, it, it, the, the, the title says, a distinguished member of the Humane Society, the Newfoundland dog. And this was painted in 1831. The one on the right is very funny. He didn't like the, the government very much. He was always at, at, at odds with them. And this particular one is, is, is deliberately about this. It's called Jack in Office. And this was a, a slang expression for a pompous government official. And this is what the pompous, he's a government official with a pipe in his mouth. This is, this is 1850. The sad, the sad thing is that he had this, he had this very, very sad end. As I say, he was put into a mental home. It's very sad. Okay, next one. He wasn't very old, but these are extraordinary. <laughs> these are dogs as jewellery, and these are very well worth looking at because they're very interesting and strange. The, the men, male jewellery mostly. I mean, this is the first one is a brooch. And it, this one is for, for Brussels, and it's by a man called Van der Hove, and it's the head of a Welsh collie. We don't know who the owner was, it doesn't say. And he was in, this is enamel and gold. This is 1880. The one in the center is a cravat pin, a cravat pin. And this is, we know the name of the man who did this. He's called w William Bridgley Ford. And this is a Great Dane, and this was 1876. But the one on the right, I think, is very strange. This is a French brooch. And this is gold and silver and enamel. And again, it's 1880. It's really rather horrid. I wouldn't want to wear that with you, really. Okay, next one. Now, this is fascinating. In 1861, the first Pekingese was brought from China. And it was given to the Queen. And he was painted, and this is Fred, it was painted by a German, Frederick William Keel, in 1861, and he's called Luti, and he was the Queen's Pekingese. Never seen these before. This was very interesting. Now, they, they began to be imported. This one on the right is much later. In, in the exhibition, which I didn't put on the, on the, um, of the slide, there is a stuffed Pekingese, which is beautifully stuffed and rather odd. This one is by a man called Elf Arthur Elsley, and this is Kylon. This is 1917. This is much, much later. But here we've got the new interesting one. But the next one is fascinating. These particular sto uh, uh, um, stone dogs are called foo dogs. And they came in at the same time in the 1860s. They were taken actually from the palace, from the palaces in China, when the French, when the English went over. It's the time of the Opium Wars, and they're stone, and they are actually guard. They're half, they're half. Um, uh, they're not really dogs. They're sort of almost a combination of sort of lions and dogs, and they, they were used as sort of guard dogs in, at the entrances of palaces and they're called foo dogs and this one is a, this particular one is a, on the left 
is a 19th century example. But you see how complicated they are. Very strange, very interesting ones. They actually, in, the, in, in China, they were first used in, in, in 2006 BC. And they were very, very important. They were they, they're, they're from the Han Dynasty. And the ones on the right also Chinese, and this these are these are literally China, and these these is a female and a male dog, and under the females, uh, 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 there's a sort of a a, a a puppy, and under I don't know what's under the male dog, but these these are uh, eighteen ninety as well. They're made of China. They're very strange. They're not in the exhibition. Okay, next one. No. This is one of the loveliest ones. This is Manet's painting of his wife. And this one, the black cat, is no longer attacking. It's, it's domesticated. It's sitting comfortably on her lap. And this is Madame Manet. It's a woman with a cat. And it was painted in 1880 and 1882. She was called Susan Lenoff. And she was, in fact, the, the, the family's piano teacher, and he married her. And you know that the, the son literally was always called her brother. And this is one of the last unfinished pictures of Manet. And it's really, it was, it was painted in his apartment, according to the son, in the, in the Rue St. Petersburg. Now, the one on the right, same year, this is Renoir. This is a lovely painting. This was actually, this girl was well known. She was, Renoir lived in Montmartre and she was known in Montmartre. She was considered very gay, very soft. I don't know, I don't know that she was particularly a prostitute. She was just a, a local girl, but it's slightly salacious because as you see, her, her blouse is falling off slightly off her shoulder here. And in her, her, her lap, is a very, very pretty little, little grey, sleepy cat. It's called the Sleeping Girl. And it really is charming, I think, this one. Okay, next one. We're going to see Renoir a lot. This is a Renoir, a beautiful Renoir. The one on the left is Young Girl with a Cat of 1881, 82. And here's the cat standing up here. And again, a very, very splendid sexual one. But the one on the right, of course, you've seen before, because this is Julie Manet, you know, Morisot's daughter. And this is Julie Manet with her cat in 1887. And the cat is sort of happy and slightly sleeping. Look at that sweet little face. Renoir was frightfully kind to, to Julie Manet, and as was Malamé. And when, when Morisot died, he immediately took her into his own family as much as he could, and they, she spent holidays with her. He, he became a sort of a father for her. Okay, next one. And here is herself, the lovely Morrison, painting Manet's, her daughter, with her dog, the Greyhound. We've seen it before, Laertes, and it was 1893, and that was given to her by Malamé. And this particular picture is 1893. So he, she was, she painted her again and again and again before she died. And as I said before, um, both Malamé and uh, and uh, Renoir were immensely kind to 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 the orphan girl because her father. She's in she's in black because her father died. She's in mourning. And the one on the right is Fouillard. We're coming slightly more up to date. And he, they, these dates are 1868 to 1940. And this is Madame Bonnard with her dog. And you see it's changed. The dog is, in both cases, the dog has got as much pa as much emphasis as, as, a, as, a, as the figure. And it's almost the same size. Okay, next one. Now, these are surprise. When I asked everybody about it, did they know? And only one person realised who this was, and they're Gauguin's. Isn't that a surprise? I think I one on the left I would never have known as Gauguin. This is his daughter Minnie and her cat, 
and it's 1889. It's a gouache on cardboard and he painted this in Brittany as he did the others, the flowers and the cats. The cats, I think, are funny. They're sort of China cats here. That, that, again, I would not, never, ever have known, I don't think, that these were straight away, that these were Gauguin. Maybe in, in, in his most domestic period. Okay, next one. This is wonderful. This is Rosa Bonheur. Now, when you go there, it's almost the first dog you see. Her painting of a dog, and it is fantastic. She, died, she was born in 1822, and she died in 1897. Very successful in her lifetime, but virtually forgotten. One hardly ever hears of her. And this is her dog, Briso. And it's a shepherd dog. Shepherd dog. It's a beautiful painting. You can see how... The, the colour of the background You well. just can't imagine. You could almost touch... That fur. It's hyper, almost it's like hyper realistic. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. And the one on the right is very interesting. This is Susan Valadon. Susan Valadon has been kind of ignored. She was the mother of Utrillo. But she was actually a model to start with. And she was a model for Degas. And she began to more or less teach herself to paint. And she became a pretty good painter. And this is her self portrait in 1927 with her cat, Remino, whom she absolutely adored. You can see the great bow on his head. Very interesting picture. We're going to see Bonnard again now, next one. I think these are lovely. This one is The Girl with the Cat of 1897. And again, very interesting the way he's, he's dealt with, with space here. That is much, much later. This is 1897, and this is 1912. And this picture is called The, the Demanding Cat. And the cat is on the table, asking for food, of course. Marvellous picture of, the, of the, the way that she almost sinks into the background. And he plays with space in this extraordinary way. Lovely painter, Bonner. Okay, next one. And these are all Bonner. All cats. He was very, he did a lot of it with Vuillard to begin with, and then afterwards he would do an awful decorative painting. This one, Sitting Woman with a Cat, is a decorative one. This is 1898, and these were sort of very, very successful and very popular. The one in the middle is the white cat, very cross, and that's 1894. But the woman with the dog is 1913. And it's it, this is a very interesting series because you can literally see the way that his painting changes right the way through. I think the woman with the dog is gorgeous. The, 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 the combination of the, the space of the dog and, and the woman, the hair of both, it's very, very, very intimate. They seem very connected. Don't they? Don't they? Yeah. Very connected. Look at the eyes. It looks like it's Ashland, doesn't it? Okay, next one. This, I think, is absolutely lovely. And this one is a Hiroshige. I put this on to remind you how important the Japanese prints were at this particular time. They came in, they came in roughly about the 1860s, 1870s. Oh, everybody was influenced by them. And this one, this woodcut, is, is about 1857. And you all know the Giacometti, uh, Giacotto, Bala, and this is dynamism. What year is, Foot, is the Hiroshige that? 1857, it's early ish. And the one, on the, 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 the one on the right is 1912. Look at the, look at, it's, of course, it's futurism. Look at the way that he, he's described the movement of the dog and the, the movement of the woman, and of course, the chain. It's a beautiful picture, this one. Because there's a there's a, a Japanese animator, very famous, uh, called Miyazaki. Oh. And he has cats predominantly oh. in his animations, in his movies. And Miyazaki obviously was looking at this. This one. The cats, like sort of 150 years later, the cats look very, you would say now that these are very Miyazaki cats. Really? But, yeah, but they're, I, I didn't ever know that reference before. Okay. Okay, next one. Oh, cool. These are these are German. 
we're, we're now really at the beginning of, of the, the 19th, the 20th century. This is Max Liebermann at the back. He was a sort of the nearest the Germans ever had to a sort of later impressionist. And it's a sleeping Dachshund on a cushion. And this is 1915. But the one on the right is absolutely wonderful. This is Schmidt, Schmidt Rotliff, which we don't know enough about, really. He was, this is 80, 80, he was born in 84. He died very late. He died in 1976. But this is the great cat. This is a, lith, a lithograph. And of course, what we're looking on the right here is German Expressionism. And this particular one is a lithograph. Okay, next one. These are wonderful. These are the wonderful Franz Mark, who was killed so sadly in the First World War. He was, of course, very important because he was one of the initial members of the Blue Rider. I mean, you know, he was both a painter and a printmaker, but he was killed in the First World War, mostly did animals. Uh, and this, the White Cat is 1912, as, as they're both 1912. And the other one is the cat, the, the blue and the yellow cat. That lovely cat. Look at the face of this cat here. That was extraordinary. You're never quite sure quite where you are in this one. Mm. Oh, and there's beautiful. another little one down below. Yeah, here. yeah. Absolutely beautiful paintings here. Okay, next one. This is a shock. This is Keith Van Dongen who was completely almost forgotten. This is very, very early. This is 1877, died in 1968. Dutch French. But the woman with the cat, this, this particular picture, which could have been painted yesterday, was painted in 1908. Whoa. Isn't that extraordinary? This almost looks like German expressionism. Doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I put again a Hiroshika here because it was such a beautiful one. This is a cat playing with string. Is Hiroshige again. You can obviously tell that they know their oh, cats, yes. their cat yeah. behavior, because yeah. these types of things are very cat-like, you know, they? the kind of the paw on the shoulder yeah. or the grabbing. They love, they the absolutely mystery. love. Most of these people loved, loved their cats. The cats became their life, particularly in the case of Gwen John, which is next. Wonderful Gwen John. I long to go. We must go, you know. To we will. We, we will. will go there. But it's a long way. Look at that little cat. Gwen John really talked about loneliness. She had a very sad life. You know, she died in 1939. And she was, of course, the sister of Augustus John. But she was we don't know where she was buried. I mean, she's an unknown grave. And she, she lived all her life, really. And she went to the Slade. And she she went to France and became the, uh, one of the lovers of the dreadful Rodin. And she was terribly unhappy with him, but it was an unhappy relationship. And then she became very much involved with a sort of religious group. But the, she, what she epitomizes for me always is she epitomizes the tremendous sadness and the loss of the women whose men were all killed in the First World War. There are all these single women, the one painting after another of these girls holding the cats. The cats become their family. The seated cat is 1900. The others are 94, 96. The girl with the cat is, 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 uh, is, is 1905. But uh, she she keeps painting them. She she actually dies, as I say, very sadly in nineteen thirty nine. Okay, next one. This I think is absolutely amazing. Now this gentleman was part of the course the De Stille movement. He exactly together with Mondrian and and uh, Van Dosberg, they created the De Stille movement. This was actually an advertisement for one of their exhibitions. It was a poster, and the cat is 1914. And he 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 he, he died. He, he he lived quite a long time. He died in the 40s. Now the one on the right again is Valazon again. It's it's Suzanne Valazon, and this is her beloved cat, Romulo, sitting on a cloth. This is 1920. It's very very knowledgeable cat. I think that one. <sighs> 
look at that face, look at those eyes. He knows she's very splendid and very beautiful. Yeah. The fabric almost becomes like part of that's his, it, his it. own fur that's pattern. It, that's it. She's lovely. Okay, the next one. Now, I, I, I was saying about this. I've never been able to, I don't know why, but I've never been able to be interested in Chagall. But he did paint lovely cats. He was born in 87 and he died in 1887. He died in 1985. Of course, he's Russian. And this is the great cat with the sparrows on the left. And the one is the poet. The one on the left is 1925. And the one on the right is, is 1949-50. And if somebody said, you think of that, that, that thing on the roof, what's it called? Think that, that, that musical. The Fiddler, Fiddler on, on the roof. roof. Yeah, <laughs> I associate it with him this too. Now, the one on the next is going to be a surprise. This is Winifred Nicholson, the first wife of Ben. And this is Winifred Nicholson's painting of Ben with his dog, Slinky. And that this was painted and survived, of course. Uh, she died in 1981. And this was painted in 1927. And their friend, their great friend, was Christopher Wood, who killed himself by throwing himself in front of a train. Homosexual, couldn't associate with people. And he went to visit them in St. Ives. And this picture is by Christopher Wood. And it's one of the paintings. It's a lovely one. He was born in 1901. He died in 1930. He was 29 when he killed himself. And uh, it's it, 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 an absolutely lovely one. And it's just called China Dogs at the St. Ives Window in 1926. Very interesting because it's part of that St. Ives group. Okay, next one. And you know who this is. My goodness. This is, of course, Picasso. This piece was painted interestingly in 1939. And all the people who admire Picasso all associate these with the with the threat of the beginning of the first world, of the Second World War. And the cat and the and the bird is nineteen thirty. They're both nineteen thirty nine. Isn't this incredibly evil? This one. They're quite remarkable. These two. And the next one. Of course, you know who this is. This is Lucien Freud. And this is his first wife. She was called Kitty Garman, and she was the daughter of Epstein. And the girl with the kitten is one of the earliest pictures of hers in the very, very kind of, um, sort of uh, German way. And this particular picture was 1947. There... Uh, I don't know what text. I'm sorry they got that on. It shouldn't be on it. Uh, but this is this is the girl with the white dog, which we all know because it's in the Tate. And this was 1951, 52. And by this time, their relationship was over. And they were divorced in 1952. And this is when he married his second time. I do know his, his particular painting changed. There's a very slight difference. This was much, much earlier when he was very much involved with the kind of German drawing, type drawing, this is much beginning to be much looser. It's a beautiful painting, actually. Okay, next to, you know, we all know who this is, the wonderful Matisse. Now, the picture here on the left, the Matisse actually is in the Cone Collection in Baltimore. It's worth going to Baltimore just to see this because got, they've got the most wonderful Matisses. And this particular one is interior with a dog, and it was 1934. And I found this wonderful cutout of the 40s. The difference when you think about the pictures we've seen of uh, Picasso and Matisse, there's a sort of a a love and a warmth in the Matisse's, which we never see in Picasso. Mm. Okay, next one. 
Is it Picasso doesn't like his women and he doesn't there like you his go. cats? Look, look, at, look, at Pica look at Picasso. How embarrassing. Yeah. And the dates are interesting. This is Woman Playing the Dog, 1953, on the left. This is extraordinary. And the other one is Woman with Dogs. This is 1962, and it's his third wife, Jacqueline Rock, and the dog is called Cobble. Extraordinary deficits in his middle. They're all one, they're one, one image, aren't they, in both cases? Now, the, it ends with lovely, with lovely, lovely David Hockney. Now, this, I put this is not in the exhibition. But I put it in because of the cat, of course. It's Mr. and Mrs. Clark and Percy. Now, it appears that Percy actually was a female cat and she was called something else. But of course, it's, they've met both. This is, this is of course, um, uh, this, is, this is Celia Birtwell and, and, uh, and Ozzie Clark. And they've just married. Their marriage didn't last, of course. He died of AIDS. And she, she, this particular one is 70, 71. And they'd met originally in the north of England when they, they both went to the same art schools. And, and that, that of course, this painting which he did, uh, uh, he was the best man at, at, at their wedding. And of course, it didn't last. But it's a bit, it's, 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 it's now in the taste, as you know. It's a lovely painting, this one. But this, when you go to the exhibition, if you go, the last room has got this huge photograph on the wall. It's much more dramatic than this. Now, the terrible, terrible thing that happened, his dear friend, Henry Gelsaba, you know, the curator of MoMA, of, of um, the vet, had died of AIDS like so many of his friends. And he was absolutely, desperately unhappy. All of his friends were going. He was worried to death. And he went to Malibu in 1995 with his beloved dogs, Stanley and Boogie. And he painted this series of dogs. And they are wonderful. This one is so sweet. And this is, this is a dog painting 12. But the marvelous thing about this, there's a, there's a wonderful sense when you get in this room of, of of kindness and, and a sort of love, really. Let's the next one. They're so sweet. I just took two of them, really. I didn't really take it. There are lots and lots and lots of them, but they are so sweet. I'm going to the last one. The last one is surprisingly. You know, the awful Lucian Freud, and this is his Pluto, his beloved Greyhound Pluto. He died, you know, in two, 2011. And this is Pluto 200, and this is, this is really a beautiful painting. This is Pluto's grave in 2003. Wasn't 